Hey everyone, welcome to the LEGO Machine Community Podcast, where we talk to veteran LEGO Machine builders about themselves, what they're up to, and about the community. I'm your host, Mika, also known as Turtle LEGO Productions, and we're here with Harm from Ultra Harm Games. So, Harm created his channel on July 27th, 2014, and mainly uploaded vending machines and arcade games. So, Harm, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's, uh, it's, it's good to be back in the LEGO moods. Yeah, it's, you... uh, it's been a while. It has been like two years since you last uploaded. Yeah, something like that. Honestly, it's just I I I forgot a little bit actually. So you forgot? No. <laughs> no, almost, almost. But it's it's. It, I said it before the podcast. It's it's very fun and uh, good feelings to look back. Yeah. And talk a little bit about it. All right. So first question is: When did you get started and why? Uh, I was uh, very much into Clash of Clans. It was a game that was uh, very... Uh, a lot of people played it at that time. And we were uh, on holiday in France. And I was uh, in the car with my mom and dad. And I said, I wanted to start a YouTube channel and build a Clash of Clans bases. That was the original plan. And... Um, and Lego was also a hobby of mine, but I I never built a machine before, to say uh, to say least. So yeah, the, the Clash of Clans. It started all with uh, Clash of Clans, and then Lego just developed more and more and more, and became the main uh, thing on the channel. Yeah. Did you did you like uh like how did you come across like Lego machines? Ooh. I, I don't remember actually, but the first machine was uh, the goalkeeper. It was like, and then you had to shoot the goal. And I, I don't remember actually how I came up with that. But um, I think Electro Dragonite was my main inspiration. Uh, I remember, uh, I don't know what the Danish corns, coins are called. Kro- Kronen? Something like that. I don't know. Uh, and he, he made a lot of machines and uh, my first candy machine i just completely copied of another youtuber <laughs> so and it's on my channel i believe still yeah yeah well most most people do start off on tutorials because like like how are you going to build a machine when you have like no experience like you, you you can you can like copy off of other people um like just to get like the basic idea but i feel like most people do start off on tutorials um i myself um just started um i, I looked at a video it's just like a, a weight mechanism so like if you put a coin in it like releases a lever and then a bunch of nerds come out so like that was my first actual mechanism that i came up with it wasn't based on a tutorial but when once i got into like actually building uh like candy machines specifically i had to like look up a tutorial for that it might have been electro dragonites a tutorial or cheesy brick studios um but that's like how i i got started with uh building and then after i got the idea then i started to make my own versions yeah yeah it is it just starts with uh, tutorials for everyone i think or you just uh, are a complete genius <laughs> genius but they um the so the candy machine with the i don't know how it's called the with candies it was like a house f- form shape um, and uh, the first M&M's machine I just uh, copied from another tutorial That's and made funny. it myself and uh, my first safe uh, I made or maybe the first two I just copied from Cheesy Brick Studios I think and just uplo- uploaded it so you just copied <laughs> every single machine every single upload on your channel is just copied <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the first the first few yeah yeah and, and th- that's it was i was 13 12 13 so uh, it's, it was amazing yeah well once once you start getting the idea you start to get understand how machines are made and how they work so it, it really just goes on from there and then you get a lot more creative and uh ingenu- ingenuitive with your ideas yes yes all right well you kind of answered a a few questions at that same answer at the start there <laughs> but uh um do you want to um elaborate on how electro dragonite inspired you Ooh. i i even bought my first my first camera 
was the camera he used. Um, he said it once in a and A, I, I believe. Uh, so that should give you an indication how much I uh, I looked up to him uh, in, uh, at the start of my career, of career YouTube channel, uh, and um, yeah, just in general, the the machine ide ideas uh, he had and the machines he made. It's like a few years before uh, I started, and Astonishing Studios the same, but. I was, I think, more of the uh, Electric Dragonite style in the beginning, st style of videos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th those those big channels uh, like Electric Dragonite, um, a lot of people do get inspired by them, um, mainly because they're big. But like they they also make these really cool machines that a lot of people aren't capable of making. Um, and uh, it's it's funny how you you copied his uh his camera too just to get that, yeah. that same style. I uh, I know a few I know a few people who have done that. They've uh, like in Q Q and A's or just general questions. They they get the same gear as the the high level like machine builders to aspire to be like them. Yes, yes, but that's that's how you start. That's how everything starts. You just look up to someone, try to make and and do everything the way they do it. Yeah. And then when you of when I felt comfortable on my level of building or filming or editing, I just started developing my own uh, my own styles. Yeah, I mean that's that's how it all starts. Mm -hmm. All right, and next question is, what's your favorite machine in the community if you can remember? This one. Oh yeah, the super ultimate one. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely one of the most memorable machines this one oh yeah that ultimate pinball machine yeah i've looked uh, i've i've watched this that video over and over again just to see how the mechanisms work and try to uh, copy that in some way shape or form i thought the the whopper machine oh yeah of astonishing studios was definitely a great one and the kfc machine as well yeah, yeah. Uh, th those two mach uh, two machines you ch showed from Electro Dragonite. Uh, there's some other people who also said that those machines are their favorite. Um, so you can you can really see like how how a lot of people like these certain machines. Um, yeah. Just from the big like ones. yeah, it's it's usually the big ones. That that's the that's yeah. the common trend. But um, it's also just like how creative the machines are and like how different they are from the rest of the machines in the community. All right, and next question is, do you have any tips, tricks, or secrets you would like to give out to some people? Fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's kind of a joke, but I faked my videos a couple of times, actually. And like, I, I didn't feel comfortable just completely faking them. They work like eight out of 10 times or five out of 10 times. And then I would just edit all the parts that worked together, choose to uh, my, my last pinball machine was an example of that. All the things worked and then filming it uh, didn't work completely. So I just uh, cut all the right parts from the right takes and uh, sliced it together. Um, other advice, most of all is don't do it for the views for me. Because when I I was building uh, machines just to get views, the the fun just disappeared slowly, and um, that's like the last ten, fifteen videos on my channel were mainly just um, view driven, like views instead of oh, what do I actually want to make myself. Um, so in the beginning, uh, when I was age 13 14 15 it was all about oh, i uh, i watched these and th this and this and this video and i just have an amazing idea just to combine them all and make something out of it and it could just be a gumball machine instead or uh, a machine with a branded machine because branded machines get more views and bigger machines especially mcdonald's machines get more views that's just the way it is um, or was at the time with the algorithm but just yeah try to hold on to the the fun of it 
that's my biggest tip advice and for me uh, just trying to create something different and new every time uh, that was a, a big factor for me I have, <laughs> I kind of made a rule for myself I cannot, cannot uh, use the same mechanism two times in a row sometimes I, I did of course but um, and for me just the subscribers and the views came eventually also I think because of the algorithm just like it was very uh, easy to go viral those are things I uh, think are important just do it for the fun instead of for the channel or views or yes yeah yeah um so fake, fake it fake it till you make it right yeah so yeah that that's a that's a large part of lego machine building that's not really shown to the public um i'm pretty sure like almost everyone's done that um yeah like like most of the time the machine works um and other times it just does not work especially when filming um that was in that was in my case when i was making my uh my firefighting arcade game, which is my second latest machine. When I, I finished I finished building it, it was working. It was working well. And as soon as I start recording, it just keeps getting jammed and I have to tear the machine apart, fix it, put it back together, and it just kept happening over and over again. Um, and on the video, you can see like all my hand positions are in like different places when I'm playing the game. Um, so you can see uh, like how many yeah, takes yeah, that yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's it, it's a it's a large part of it but you you gotta complete the video you're not just gonna give up on the video if the machine doesn't work um i i i wonder like how many machines are actually fully functional and never jam i i had a few of them but most of the time 99 percent, but not it's it's lego at the end of the day so yeah yeah, yeah. i i also remember uh, my uh domino's machine uh, there were pieces just hanging and then uh, kind of dispense mechanism just uh, took the gears out of the box I don't know if I, I explain it correctly um, and then the pizza falls out of the machine but pizzas cannot like sit that way yeah so I just had empty boxes in the machine and uh, <laughs> I, bu I bought a pizza in the local uh, supermarket store for one euro and uh, and put that <laughs> in the pizza box for one shot but else than that the machine worked like fully so i don't think it's cheating but it's uh i always try to make it look a little bit better for the video yeah that, that's that's <laughs> that's filmmaking for you yeah uh, yeah and based on on what you said for like just building for the fun of it that's been a, a big theme um in this podcast where like um We've we've seen like uh, some builders just like create machines just to make be like get big and they they have done success in that, um, but a lot of people do burn out because of that. Like they're building machines that they don't necessarily want to make and then they're trying to make it as good as they can and then that really brings their enthusiasm down. That was especially the case for me. Um, I wasn't really like building machines um, for views, but. I just try to make the best me machine I can possibly make, like for like how many years, um, and that really burnt me out because I it took the fun out of it because I just try to be like super serious about it and try to make it as good as I can. Um, but like I, I'm I'm satisfied with most of my machines, but um, overall it's it doesn't really it's not really worth the stress putting into the machine if you're not having fun with it. Yeah, definitely. Yes, I I uh, I. I... Um, have experienced a lot of those things as well as well really this but most of the time it's like there's still this romantic more romantic feeling of the beginning that I try to hold on to just making machines for fun and uh, uh, filming it with the uh, camera of my mom she had to use for work it's like 720p max and uh, it's it was it looked horrible but it's it was just fun and at school people like oh do you you have a youtube channel right yeah yes how many subscribers ah like 37 <laughs> whoa <laughs> and, and i was the i was yeah that, that's great times great memories yeah yes all right and next question is what do you struggle with the most when making machines for me the process of building i haven't 
really build a big machine in a long time. Uh, but it's you have an idea and you have an, a vision, at least for me. And I uh, just try to figure out the colors and figure out nice ways of decorating the machine. You, you can say it. That's always a big part for me. But then always at some point you get stuck and the mechanism doesn't work like you want it to or it looks awful or it, it doesn't work at all. And uh, those moments, uh, you just, oh, I, I'm going to watch a YouTube video and, or uh, I'm going to do school homework or something. And then it takes always uh, a couple of days to get back to it. And that's something for me because I uh, put the level higher each time for my machines. Uh, so the struggles were more complicated. And so I started yeah, procrastinating, that's the word. And that's a, a big thing for me in building. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I felt the same, um, especially with um, my latest maybe four machines or so. Um, I put, I took like lawn breaks from it because I, I just didn't really feel like building. Like I, I have other stuff to do. I have homework. I have all these other things that are more important, but like, I, I still want to, I still want to build, but like once I start building, it just kind of like, uh, it's, I don't feel like doing this, but like, uh, you just really have to just push yourself to actually build, um, and keep building for like longer than just 20 minutes or something. Um, if, if you only have the time to build for 20 minutes, do that and you'll actually build machines. But, um, but if, if you're just getting bored of it, once you start actually doing it, then you'll get in the rhythm and you'll start actually making progress. Yes. And I, I also think it's, it has something to do with the, the phase you're in. So like when you will get 15, 16 plus school is more important at edu education work, and your life is getting busier and busier and under that age and a lot of people started at that age i think from uh, the, the active ones in in my days i'm so old <laughs> back in my days uh, the old days they were like 15 to 16 17 and that's like the part of life you you actually don't have any worries uh, at least um not a lot Yes, that's a that's a thing. Yeah. And if you just like b try try to build consistently, you really need uh, a lot of motivation. <laughs> yeah. And time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So next question is: Has machine building has machine building helped you in some area of life? Yeah, it it definitely helped to develop my creativity, I think. And. Yeah, the the fun of making things for me, that's a, a, a big part. So just enjoyment. Also, um, like I, I when I started to gain some serious views, I uh, I could also buy a little equipment here and there. Not too much. I didn't really earn much. If I, kind of a lot for a 13 year old <laughs> but not much like in total if i look back on it now and that helped to just buy your own camera two very cheap soft boxes um, that stuff which has helped me to develop more in a filmmaking career so that's uh that's also a part of it yeah the the common response is uh creativity um but I, I also like just like even this the small the small mention of just like building things uh, like I for for me personally, like I, I like working with my hands. I like building things. Um, I'm pretty skilled in woodworking, even though I haven't done it for a few years. Um, but like just just building things and creativity uh, definitely does help with other areas of life. And like you said, filmmaking, like even though like you you're you're being creative and building these machines and then that helped you um get some money and get some gear for filmmaking and then now you're you're full-on you're full-on filmmaker you're making videos uh outside and and that maybe may have stemmed just from like building machines and then yes that, definitely yeah when i started building i had no idea i would just in a few years become uh it would become my work just to film things and edit things so and I was also thinking in uh, in Holland 
uh, my friends are gonna are gonna laugh at this but we have a saying uh, and i will just um directly translate it um uh, for me lego building uh, kept me off the street <laughs> if that makes sense but like every teenager has to to do something with their time and for me i was just con constantly having ideas and building things and uploading editing filming blah, blah, blah. and that's like was very good time consuming i think yeah that's cool yeah all right and next question is what type of machine would you like to see someone make actually the first thing that comes to mind is everything has already been done like the the real money ideas i actually okay this is copyright now i actually thought about making a, a nintendo switch machine so just a vending machine is not that complicated all right and next question is what are you up to nowadays now my third year of my uh, film education study so that's fun and uh, i have my uh, own business besides that making loads of um, cool things video clips um, short commercials school projects so all into filming at the moment yes yeah that's cool and with that what are what are your opinions on the past lego machine community it was very small that's the first up i think i would say i i think you were in it but not like on the front, a little bit. I was um, I was a pretty small channel. Yeah, I, I still am, but I I remembered your name. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, if it's worth if it's worth something. Um, we commented on each other's videos, and it was, for the most part, uh, the the main thing, actually, and I just uh, a respect for uh, just. Uh, I can't come up with the English words, but like shared respect for each other because we all made machines and developed uh, camera wise, editing wise, lighting wise, uh, mechanism wise, um, just like one big uh, bunch of in uh, inspiration. And that time, the people that are now still big, I think, like Basketballer, Astonishing Studios, Electric Dragonite, um blah bricks i remember super lego sam yeah oh uh, sam sam he lived in holland as well that's kind of a good fun fact uh jacob gonway yeah i remember yeah he made loads of machines and just like huge inspiration so i was watching every other video that was uploaded and it's it was like continuous flow of good machines and good ideas actually because there was so much to discover at that time still and like with Blabricks I talked a lot we actually did a collaboration but we also skyped like a few times just to, just to talk and Basketballer I uh, have messaged with a lot so that's it was good it was fun especially for a 13 14 15 year old just uh, yeah good vibes yeah yeah that 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 small community vibe um it's the the machine lego machine communities uh definitely bigger today but like back then it was pretty small there were there were a lot of small channels but like barely anyone knew about them like maybe like 15 subscribers or under um they weren't really like they they, they didn't really show up in like recommend recommended videos or anything um it was mainly like just like a group of maybe 15 or 20 so uh yeah, like machine max. builders um and they they'd upload like every other week or so and we'd always see these like super cool machines um and it would it would always like blow our minds like each time we'd like watch yeah. every single one and like whoa uh because I, everyone was improving so much yeah because there was so much room for improvement at that time still and the videos were going viral just if you if the video looked good it was at best quite a high chance of going 
viral or getting at least a few thousand or ten thousand views so it was good good times yeah yeah though those those times were definitely the nostalgic times for us and i i find like the the machines back then um on a more general level were better um better looking and uh overall more emotionally uh connecting you you feel more emotion when you're watching the video like you're you're more you're more amazed by it um and just based on what you've seen after you kind of um you kind of stopped uploading uh how do you see the current lego machine community okay i'm not that updated anymore but the the big channels uh, kind of stopped up uploading at the same time i did like a few years ago one two three years ago and uh, you said just before, like the quality is is not as great anymore of, of machines or video wise. That's correct, right? Yeah. So I I conclude that, um, but I don't really know uh, that there have not been like new, uh, very fast going channels. Who, like, who took like uh, the empty space and and flourished to say so but i don't know i know but that's that's uh, what i've seen yeah and so say. uh what you don't know is there's actually a lot of like new builders that are coming in and they're growing so much quicker than we were back in our day um okay. like there's there's this one channel called puzz lego who already has like close to or, or about fifty thousand subscribers and he's only been here for like a year or so um, and he's, he's uploading like really frequently. They're just like small machines, but, um, yeah. And then there's a bunch of other channels that have like thousands or, and are some are like growing to like 600 subscribers really quickly, like really quickly. Like even back in our day, like 500 subscribers was a big number for most people. Um, but these channels are growing like super quickly. Like they've been under for t under here, they've been here for under two years. Um, and they're growing at much faster rates than we were. So it's a really cool, this, uh, cool thing to see. And it hopefully will inspire some other people to join the community that way. So, so uh, Lego machines are still being discovered, you would say? Yeah, yeah. And there, there's a lot more being uploaded now um, and a lot more builders. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to have a look. You can send me some channels after the podcast. Yeah, you can just check the Discord, Discord server. You'll, you'll see all those active channels. All right. And what are your opinions on the future of the Lego machine community? For, for, my, for me, myself... I would love to make a few machines a year, like two, three, that would be enough for me. That rhymes. Because I still I still have ideas sometimes, but I just don't make them because time. Blah, blah, blah. So I'd love to just build machines and get back into the old fun uh, again. And just talking about it makes me uh, nostalgic a little bit. <laughs> 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 so yeah for, for myself that's the plan but i don't think i will be uh, making a lot i have a machine i'm building on once uh, or twice a month but it's not far in the making it's a soccer table maybe it will be uploaded when this podcast is uploaded <laughs> uh, but, yeah and uh, the future of the community i hope there will be channels that flourish and do well and enjoy it and uh, in my days like uh, the platform to uh, be a community it, it wasn't really there and so what you're doing with the discord and stuff i think it's uh, it's great for channels that are now in the the fr the fun first uh, few years of building so i hope to see uh, many great machines yes yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's hard to predict the future, but we just have high hopes for it. Yeah, just try to uh, to not expect too much and not do too much. Just yeah, keep the fun. That's the, uh, my main uh, thing I want to say. Yeah, and do you have anything else you want to add? Nope. I'm honored to be a guest. That's first of all. I'm so curious to see uh, the other podcast. Yeah. Like, because um, most of the channels, like Astonishing Studios, just films himself in his videos. And I've seen Blah Bricks, um, 
Lego with 777. That's he's like one of the most talented builders there. Yeah. There is. Yeah, definitely. It's crazy as machines. Yeah. Like, I think of myself. I can make uh, a unique mechanism, but his mechanisms are like. Yeah. Yeah. Like on another level, and Basker Butter. Um, but most other channels I just have never seen the face of or never talked with or so I'm just you feel like you have a connection some way but never really talk to talk to them yeah it's it's great it's great all right well that is our time for the Lego Machine Community Podcast thank you so much Harm for joining this episode uh Thanks for the info, even though you haven't been here for a while. Uh, it's, it's great to see some good good memories, um, bring back some good memories. Um, and we will see you next episode. Bye.